Welcome back. My name is Mark Anthony DuBose Jr. I was born July 4th, 1986. I want to say thank you for tuning in. Today, I kind of want to talk about something that may not be appropriate things to say, but it's just some stuff that I'm just noticing based on stuff that I just see. You know, today I happened to go to another uh, dog trainer's classes today that really got me thinking. Someone that, anyone that watches my channel, y'all are probably completely against, but for some reason, I just totally understand the need for why he's doing what he's doing. He's needed, and that's Mr. Dog Daddy. He is absolutely needed on this planet to do what it is that he's doing. Some of y'all may not understand because I think that the thing is, I'm always looking at the good, and I can't really see the bad, that a lot of y'all can only see like the bad things that are portrayed to be about who he is and what it, what it is that he's doing. And, and I see the good things that he's doing. And some of might say, there can't be a possible good thing that he's possibly doing. You know, he's using that leash and getting on these dogs. And, and he's absolutely needed because there's something that, that I just am really paying attention to lately, especially just going to another one of his classes. This is the third one I've been to now. So I've seen him work with about 100 dogs at this moment. I don't think people understand animals anymore. I don't think this is the part that's going to be controversial that I'm about to say. I don't think that some people should own dogs. I don't think some people should have the, the opportunity to be able to own, own them. And, and that, that's when it gets down to like, you know, the breed specifics that people are trying to ban different breeds. I don't even want to say that you shouldn't own this specific breed. I believe that some people just shouldn't own dogs. You just shouldn't be allowed to have one anywhere near. Now, if you lived in a place like, not even me, you need to move another 20 miles that way where there's no one around, there's no one else's dog around, there's no one's kids around, so that the rest of us can just live in peace. Because there's so many people out here that your dogs are, most people that watch me, your dogs are, if you're having a problem, they all right. They, they bad. And this might be bad to you, but you watch a video and you see someone else's dog, you're like, yeah, mine's not that bad. And I'm telling you, however crazy you think your dog is right now, your neighbor's dog is crazier. Your neighbor's dog from there is even worse. Your neighbor's dog from there is like 10 times worse. And you just don't get to see these dogs. And you don't get to see these dogs because the people that own these dogs are terrified of their own dogs. Then they're terrified of what the dog is going to do, not only to them, but to other people. But yet you still keep having this dog out of, I'm not sure why. Because some people just shouldn't own dogs. I don't care what breed it is. I don't care if you get a, I don't care what breed it is anymore today. I used to think like certain people shouldn't have certain breeds, certain types of dogs. Like I would say certain people shouldn't have like a German Shepherd because of, just straight up, most of them, you, you got to kind of be a little more assertive isn't the word, but just matter of fact is what I want to say. Hey man, I want you to get off the couch and put in action and do something about it. Don't just stand there and be the, the push pushover, I believe is what people think of when you think of like a permissive style person or parent or whatever, that they're just a pushover. And, and being a pushover has nothing to do with that. Being a pushover is a pushover. Being someone that doesn't do what they say is someone that just doesn't do what they say. Someone that just doesn't actually put in any sort of action and any sort of anything that they got going on, that's just who that person is. That's got nothing to do with someone being more on the side of, I don't like using corrections and punishment to be able to get what I want. And some people just shouldn't own a dog. Shouldn't own a dog. Shouldn't, I can go deep on that half a second as well. Shouldn't own, have children either. Because <laughs> I know me at the age that I had my kids, because I'm about to have an 18-year-old daughter. The age that I had my kids, I shouldn't have had no kids. I should have been like cut off. Something should have happened to me that said, dude, you can't have kids because of how your lifestyle is and who you are and what you're thinking about and what's going on with you. This shouldn't be allowed for you. You should wait until you're later. But, you know, that gets kind of crazy when you think about it that way. But when it comes down to the dogs, I don't believe it to be as crazy as someone saying that we shouldn't have children. Because some people just shouldn't, shouldn't have them. You shouldn't have them. Because all that's going on in reality is you're, you're leading your neighbors to be in a dangerous situation straight up. You're leading your neighbors to be in a situation that they shouldn't have to be in. That, that we should be able to, because this is the thing, you know, maybe 50, 100 years ago when everyone lived on lots of land like this, you had your crazy dog at the house. It was like so far from the street. People barely would, I mean, even when I moved here, people barely drove down my road. More and more people drive down here and more and more people around. But it's still, it's not that frequent. It's Saturday at, what time is it, 6, 15, 6, 30. And you'll see there's like a car here and there that drives by. It's not that busy but it's busy, but it's, you know, that might've been fine. But now that we live in like condos and apartments and townhomes and houses with housing development and communities, there should be restrictions on who can own animals and, and how that animal needs to be and perform and function to be able to be allowed in that neighborhood. 
I'm surprised. Like, you know, granted, you know, I was talking crazy, crazier than how I'm talking right now in reality about putting restrictions and mandates of trying to create a a, a, a stipulation basically to start the hand. Because when I started going to the neighborhoods, thank, this is the part that I'm going to say that I've been disconnected from this type of work because my new marketing plan, I guess I can say, my new website, it tailors to the people that are like me and you, that we just work with our dogs. We like our dogs. We engage with the dog. We do a lot with the dogs. We may have been doing said the wrong stuff with the dogs, but at least we're doing stuff with the dogs. We're like actively engaged and I want to see the best in and I want to do more. I'm trying to figure out more. But there's a whole nother side of this audience that I used to work for in reality. That's why me and Mr. Dog Daddy were like, I really liked watching them because his audience was, that's the audience that I was a part of. And there's a huge audience, much bigger than my audience would ever be able to become the way that I talk about dogs. We're talking like one out of a thousand in reality, probably even greater than that. There's a thousand people that that were over there. That's why I used to be I used to be busy working dogs because some people just shouldn't own dogs because you want something that's not realistic and then you want some sort of show and 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 then you just in reality want to go back to the same old misery. Again, this isn't my audience that I'm talking to, but this is something that is just the reality because I was trying to come up with it when I used to do this. I used to go to the neighborhood to see the dogs in these neighborhoods and be like, this dog is a danger to your neighborhood. I was going to come up with a whole thing to write up to say, like, HOAs is what I was going to target first. Like, y'all need to start, like, uh, uh, doing, like, uh, home visits and, and like, uh, 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 tests and stuff with these dogs before you even allow them in, the, in your community. And then I was going to go deep and go into the insurance companies. Like, I was going to go to Geico and State Farm and all state and all these companies and write them just letter to letter to letter saying, before you can even assure someone that has this dog, y'all need to, like, check this dog out before you even uh, would allow insurance. I was going deep with how, because I saw stuff that was just like, we shouldn't have to live this way. That's the part with me that it's like, it's not my world. It's not my, but a lot of us, unfortunately, especially today, this is the biggest challenge that it's like, it's my own world. I don't care about them. Everything is me. And that's not the world I live in. That's why for me still, when I go out in public, and especially if there's people and a lot of people around outside of just, I'm on a dedicated trail somewhere, I leash my dogs because it's not my world. It's not mine. I don't get to, to just do whatever the heck I want to do. I don't care how good and how great my stuff looks. It's not my world. I'm going to drive the speed limit. I'm going to put the insurance on my vehicle. I'm going to be in, in all the, the laws and regulations that I can be because it's not mine. But we got a whole other like mass majority uh, aside that's going on in, in, in just, I only live in the States and, and around where I live. So I don't know everywhere, but I just know like all around where I'm at that there's, there's like, a completely different side of it that it's all yours and you could do whatever you want with it. You could treat anyone you want, however you want. And that's a part of me that for, for one, like my business doesn't go towards that anymore. And why I totally respect Mr. Dog Daddy for what it is that he does, because it's hard to, <laughs> that's hard to work with in reality. It really is. I don't care how much you, I, it's hard to work with somebody like that. It's hard to work with someone that's just like, come and lay the law down on my dog because my dog is a problem and I don't need to do nothing. I just want to sit on the couch, keep watching my TV, and the dog needs to get fixed. Fix the dog. That's hard, that's hard work to do. That's extremely hard to do. So I respect the man for somehow still being able to stay in that. I respect every single dog trainer that's doing that. That's hard. It's so hard. It's so hard to, because this is the old clients that I used to have. Show, show them something for a week. I, I just prefer the week by week stuff. You know, I, I'm going to show you what to do. You got to work on it. You don't work on it. We're not getting anywhere. I'm not the guy for you. Go find the other people that do something different. But I still don't know if anyone's getting the grade A success if you're literally just sitting on the couch and don't want to do nothing. So I just show you what to do. And I want to come back next week. When I come back next week to 99% of people, let's just say 90%, 90% of people, even man, greater than that in real, almost every single person that I consider to even, because uh, I don't accept second appointments. I'll do my first consult just to, just to feel us out. We good? If, if we ain't good, I'm not even going to schedule another appointment with you. And you can even call me to say, hey, can we, and I'm just not even going to schedule with you because we're not going to get anywhere. And I, I, I'm only going to work with folks that want to actually get somewhere and actually understand that you got to put in the work with the dog. You got to stand up. You got to do something. You got to do something. And and uh, I, I, I used to get the, the, the ones that I would show them what to do on that Friday and make an appointment to come back next Friday and come back next Friday. And like nothing was done. I mean, nothing was done. Zero. And all I'm saying <laughs> was simple things to do. Nothing like do the sit, do the down, do the this, do the this, do the this. I was just like, hey, man, can we just even buy a collar for the dog? Because it doesn't even own one. Can we buy a leash for the dog? Because the dog doesn't even have one. And just just let's start with that. Let me come back next Friday. Uh, Oreo, get out of there. Let's start. Get out of there. Let's start back next week and, and, and we can continue to keep on going. 
It didn't even get that done. Can't even do that. So it, it's so aggravating to try to help people when you can't help people. And that, that, that's, that's, some hard, that's some hard stuff. And then thankfully for me, you know, I guess I just found somebody and got the different lingo of marketing to be able to reach the audience that I'm all about. The people that I want to be able to work with and people that, that want to be able to actually work with me so that we can actually get, to get, get in a good place. But some people, you just shouldn't own dogs. Just straight up. Straight up should, shouldn't own them. And I guarantee you, no, everyone that watches me, more than likely, y'all y'all good with your dogs. Your dogs are great. But I guarantee you this. You see someone over there. You see your neighbor. You see this. You see your family member. Uh, Ophi. Oh, come here. Uh, you see a family. You're just like, yeah, you shouldn't have this dog. You shouldn't be around dogs. I don't even, you, some of y'all family members, you not even let alone like watch your children. You don't even let your family watch your own dog. Cause you're like, I don't know. No, you're not going to be, you're not going to be able to do work with my dog. You're not going to be able to get it done. And, and, and we see that so much out there. And yet it's just wild to me that the ones that just, just, this messed up me saying, but straight up, that just shouldn't have the dogs have like the dog that just, they shouldn't have <laughs> outside of like a, you know, they can have a, a Ophi. Ophi, they can have like a, 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 a sweet little calm, relaxed uh, lab or something. You know, th that might be a little bit better. But no, they have the dog that's like intense. They got like the border collie that's like on a thousand like mine. And they just coop it up in an apartment, never let it out because it's barking at people. And then you just you just never introduce it to the world again because you're just scared. And you have that dog as just like, like, like a loaded weapon sitting inside of your house. That it's waiting for a chance that you're slipping, the, the windows open, the front doors open, the back doors open, it's gone, it's gonna go wreck, wreck, wreck havoc in the neighborhood. And those dogs are just unfortunately everywhere. And we shouldn't have to live this way. We shouldn't have to live, because I know a lot of y'all, because straight up for me, especially with me just going to some folks' houses before, I shouldn't have to be in fear walking around in this world of what someone else's dog's gonna do based on what I can clearly see how the dog is portraying. Because today, again, you know, most dogs, have no intent to harm. But today again, I saw many of the dogs that have 100% intent to harm because they just don't know what to do because the owner of that dog is just not doing anything, anything at all, unfortunately. Thinking that some miracle is gonna happen, that things are just gonna be perfect and, and amazing and awesome and it's just gonna uh, uh, change overnight and it's just gonna be a miracle. This person's gonna come in and, and just fix the dog and, and everything's gonna be good to go from now. And that is just not the way this works. That's why some folks, we just, dogs shouldn't be allowed. You know, the biggest thing that I see in our future is, uh, unfortunately, is we got folks that are like worried and nervous about certain uh, tools of dog training, like e-collars and prong collars and stuff uh, being, being uh, 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 what do you call it, banned and, and illegal. Man, it might be almost illegal to the point that you might have to do some sort of certification courses to even be able to own a dog. That's where we're in reality headed to next. And that's where, unfortunately, a lot of breeds are going to end up just disappearing because there's going to be certain ones that are able to work with them and, and get them to be awesome. And then there's others that just you're, you're not going to be able to have. And it's going to go, <laughs> I can see the world getting crazy to the point that it's like, here's a breed list that you <laughs> like. Basically, when you join the military, you take the tests and they tell you these are the jobs that you can do. Those over there. Nope. You can only do these jobs. And that's like what it can come down to It's like these are the only dog breeds that you're allowed to have. Any outside of that, you are not allowed to own. You haven't, like said, worked your way up. You haven't educated yourself enough. You haven't learned enough skills to be able to get to that point to be able to actually deal with that yet. Uh, Ophi. No, I'll stay here. I'm trying to upgrade this dog's experience of understanding. She got a collar on. You stay, like, literally six feet from me. Collar off, you got some space. Uh, uh, collar and harness on. She can go do what she wants on the trail. Hooked up to the harness. She can run, chase, and pull, do whatever she wants. Hooked up, leash to the collar. She can't do anything. I'm just adding like layers and layers and layers and layers and layers. So here I'm just gonna go back to my original layer, uh, Ophi. To really just, this is the thing, I'm just really slowing down with this dog to let her know what it is I'm looking for. Come here, you moseying along all slow. <laughs> to really just let her know what I want. Cause I wanna, again, I want this dog to be my role model for all of my futures that I get and even just helping out dogs for doing some work. Because she's a very interesting dog that when she sees that dog that's like just barking and lunging, even want to try to put teeth on, she's able to dance around it so beautifully where she just has this like, everything's cool. And I want her to get better and better and better at that because that's just the, the, the fast track to be able to, to snap some dogs out of just that extreme just rage that they're in. 
for a dog to come in with like zero rage behind her and just say, hey, calm down. We're good. We're fine. But the thing I want from her is she needs to be able to listen to me very, very, very well. So I want every little scenario where I'm getting picky. This is me and everyone else. You do what you do. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm just picky with what it is that I'm looking for. And I do a lot and I like to do a lot and I like to do a lot more. Most, I mean, I, I would say 99% of people would take this dog how she is today. You would be like over the moon. You'd be so excited. She's so cool because I've already seen it. She's good with anyone that I've ever gave the leash to. She's good with. She, she's just like, she's, she's just in the world. She's, she's really nice at this moment today. And I believe that comes down because I'm not using like pressure tactics to try to give it, convince her to listen to me. I'm just asking, hey, can you please, please, in reality, please, not begging, but just saying, listen to me because I'm going to listen to you. So we're working back and forth. You let her run, awesome dog. And I want to be able to figure out how to get more dogs in that sense because I know that that's just not what's going on. But the thing is, again, why some folks just shouldn't have a dog because you just simply don't want to do anything at all. Anything at all. I saw over 30, almost 40 dogs today. All, what is the one thing that every single one was anxious as all can be? Scared as all can be. Fearful as all can be. Nervous as all can be. Just, just extreme levels of anxiety. It's like, how can you just be a human and just allow your dog to continue to keep on staying in it and not try to do something? You just sit on the couch and just l l watch the TV and just, just not even do nothing with the dog and just allow it to keep going down and down and down and down and down. And why some people just should not be able to have the chance to own the dog. Because you're not willing and wanting to do anything at all with that animal. Nothing at all. As simple as I make it be that I try to explain to people how to be able to get the dogs to be able to calm down is what I'm just showing right here. Have the dog on a leash. Stop. My goodness. Stop talking to the dog. Stop touching the dog. Stop eyeballing the dog. Just leave the dog alone and just have the dog with you. That's just a huge thing. All that I see the same common theme with every single time I see a super anxious dog, a dog that is just super reactive dog, a dog that is just wants to flip out and go crazy at the world. I see the same habits. Y'all are just smothered, just touching all on it, holding all on it, trying to pick up an 80-pound dog. Oh, it's okay. Calm down, calm down. That doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. Try to shove food in its mouth every two seconds. Food and food and food. And oh, stop, 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 up. Sit, 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 down, 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 down. Like every five seconds. You're just, you're, you're, you're creating a dog to just be an absolute nightmare. And why, again, some folks should just should not own a dog. Because I believe that, straight up, what is one thing that is on rampant worldwide, but especially here in the States, is anxiety and depression. And the anxiety and depression that is ramping up in human beings is also ramping up in the animals. And it's not only just ramping up in the animals, but it's ramping up in the children. And the children are just getting messed up because the parents are full of anxiety. Let's have 18 kids. And now you got 18 kids, maybe 16 out of the 18, my kid too, that just go a different way. But 16 of those kids are going to end up being just as anxious times 10 for how anxious you were. It's like we're just, we're, 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 we're allowing this to just keep moving on and on and on. But the beautiful thing about humans, at least, I can make a decision when I get old enough to be able to decide, I don't want to go that route. I want to do something different. But the dogs don't get the chance to do that. They just live their entire life in anxiety. They live their entire life in fear. They live their entire life just broken, beat down, scared, nervous, sketched out, in extreme amount of fear, and they never get a chance to just get out of that. All they do is just keep going further and further in. And the only time that anybody out here does anything about it is when the dog does bite somebody. Oh, okay, now we got to do something about it. But when we as a smart said animal working person can see the dog and, and, and say, hey, that's about to happen. If we don't do anything, we don't intervene is a word there to actually get the dog to be able to get through this, that dog is going to do something later on. What it exactly does and how far it goes, that's who knows. But we know that something's going to happen based on what I'm seeing right now. And, and unfortunately, no one wants to do anything about that. No one cares about that. But we care about that in the sense of, but still, it, it, it's just wild to me. I made a video a couple years ago talking about how these dogs are going to start to do damage to not only dogs, but the people. And it's unfortunately going on today. And it's going on today because some people just shouldn't have dogs. Because we're just, we're, we're not doing anything with it. Not we. I ain't, I'm working my dogs. Some folks just don't do, you don't do nothing with the dog. I think that an overnight success is going to happen, that your dog is just going to be cured. It's going to be fixed. That's why Dog Daddy is so popular. So, so popular. 
I mean, extremely popular worldwide because worldwide there's so many people that just don't want to do nothing at all, that want to pay a little bit of money, that feels like a little bit, a lot of money, but it's not enough money to make you not want to do it, to pay something to make you think that all your problems are going to be fixed in, in a five-minute working session. And this, it's always going to be there because we're always going to have human beings there. And, and for me, you, you know, two weeks is your own. He's going to make his money. And I'm going to be on a different side of that because I work with dogs in a completely different way. And I'm not here to stop him and tell him to not do what he's doing. I, in reality, at the end of the day, unfortunately, just straight up. Some of y'all might not like this, but I applaud what it is that he's doing. He's trying his best. He's trying his absolute best. And it's an incredible thing to be able to see. But the, the thing is that he explains to every single person, <coughs> today was pretty impressive, the language that he's kind of changing into. You know, it's going to take a couple months to a year. So you keep working on this, keep working on this, keep working on this, keep working on this, keep working on this. Stop taking a dog out. Just work out in the house. Keep working at it. Keep working at it. Your dog's going to start to get better. But what does everyone do? Why isn't my dog's not fixed? Oh, that, that training didn't work. So on to the next. As opposed to like knowing that you have to put in work. You got to put in work. This is something that it, 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 it's interesting to me on how we just, as a collective society, <laughs> someone says something that I'll just never forget. Like, we need to bring Shane back <laughs> in some stuff, unfortunately. As ruthless as it is, as, like, hard as it is, as, 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 as it's just, when, you, when you're the one on the other side of that, if someone says your stuff is a mess and we, you need to get, get right, fix your stuff up, it's hard to hear. But a lot of times, that's just, unfortunately, we, we need that. We need that. We can't just, you're good, sister. You're good, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. And your stuff is just absolute. It, the main thing is, if you're working at it, that's one thing. There's no reason to shame anybody that's working. But it's the folks that don't work nothing, that don't, don't do nothing, don't do anything. We can't just give them a smile like, it's okay, it'll get, the no, something needs to be done about that. Something needs to be like, pr pr pushed forward with that. It's, it's, you know, as much as these activists out here want to get rid of tools and stuff, I'm surprised they're not pushing for like, uh, 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 what do they call that? Each state's a little bit different, but the child protective services, uh, uh, every state's got something like that. Uh, you 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 are uh, uh, neglecting and not taking care of your children. The state comes in and they about to take those kids and they about to remove those kids from you. But it, it it's a uh, it's very very interesting that we ain't got nothing like that for dogs. Only only uh, Ophi. Only, only to the fact that when the dog finally bites somebody, then it's like oh okay now we'll put it in the shelter. Now we'll do something. Uh, Ophi, don't worry about him. You're with me. You stuck to me. Now we'll do something, but we won't do anything about it when we can see all the said issues actually going on and actually happening. And and we need a whole new service, unfortunately, that I don't want to have to. But unfortunately, that's just what's going to have to happen because we can have so much out here that is just like we think these dogs are just like like they're just you see your dog. It's cute with you, but it's not cute with everyone else. That's why you don't I mean, y'all you understand what I'm saying. But to the folks that just don't do nothing with the dog. It's cute to you, but you're, that's why you don't take it nowhere because it's scared. And, and you're scared of what that dog may do to somebody. And as scared as you're getting and continuing to keep on locking that dog down, locking that dog down, locking that dog down, not getting that dog through its problems, not getting that dog, dog through its issues, the more and more that dog is just going to keep on growing and growing and growing and getting worse and worse and worse. Worse to the point that it's just, it, it's going to have to have an explosion. Going to have to have, this is just what I see, especially, I don't, just please people, please. If you do not want to put a lot of time into your Australian Shepherd, please stop caring about how cute they are and stay the heck away from the dog because they just have this, this, this energy that's impressive. But if you don't know what to do with it, it's not for you because they just build and build and build. And then they have this like, ah, and then they just go wild. And that wild stance, these dogs know how to put teeth on to get stuff to move. And how my Border Collie uses his teeth, Border Collies aren't usual, typical for using their teeth. But when I see the cattle dogs, I see the Australian Shepherds, when they use their teeth to move a cow that's not wanting to move, it's not this like little cute little, the, the cows are bleeding. And the cow's skin is different. That's thick than ours. So the amount of force that they're putting on these animals to move, ah, they let that out. That's a dead kid or a kid that's going to need reconstructive surgery that's just never going to look the same anymore. An adult that's going to end up having something severely damaged, they're not going to be walking straight anymore. And everyone's just getting these dogs because of how it looks. That is so selfish. So selfish. And we need to figure out how to be able to uh, get, uh, communicate to folks of like, you need to understand how to work with these animals or you just shouldn't be able to have them. Because these dogs are, are not nothing to play around with. Go get you a fish. 
Don't get no fish tank, get no sharks, but get you a goldfish, get you some tilapia, get you a catfish, get you a bass, get you some fish to, to be able to take care of. Get the heck away from the dog if you're not doing anything with it. I just keep seeing this over and over, and thankfully, thankfully, uh, but not thankfully, but thankfully, I just don't have work in that realm anymore because of how my language has changed and what it is that I do and just how the world works. What you start doing, the world is going to start attracting that to you. I'm going to start to fade away because there was a time that all I got was like, uh, uh, place it back there. All I got was, 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 uh, 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 just work of like people just want, want do nothing at all. I want the dog fixed overnight. That's all I used to get. And it's easy money. Charge this, charge this, charge this, charge this, and move on. Nothing was done. Okay, we just got to charge a little bit more. Nothing was done. Oh, we just charge. It's so easy. It's so easy. But I just feel guilty doing that personally. I just, it, I just can't do it. Where now I, I'm moving to something different. But it's, it's, it's something that is just, it's just reminding me today of what it is that I used to do. And, and seeing all of the absolute chaos that I used to be a part of. And it, and it really let me realize that it didn't get better and it didn't go away. It's still there. I just move into a different direction, but all that is still there. It's still going on. People are still treating these dogs the same way. I just don't see it anymore, but it's still there. And, and that's something that unfortunately needs to be done about. That we can't just like allow this to just keep going on because it's only just gonna keep, unfortunately, getting more dangerous for us as a collective group of people. But if you're working on your dog, cool. Keep, I'm not gonna say nothing about what you're doing, but it's for the folks that just don't wanna do anything. Think that you could spend three or four or $500 and my dog's gonna be fixed. You're not gonna spend money. You gotta spend your time. Your time is what needs to be done here. Money's not gonna get you anywhere. Time, you gotta do something. That's the biggest thing that I just keep on seeing across the board to everyone. When you just start asking basic questions, you know, what you do with your dog? Oh, nothing. It's just, it's going crazy. It's chewing up the whole house, so I just put it in the crate. You take it for a walk around the block? Oh, no, it barks at everything, so I can't take it for a walk anymore. Okay, well, cool. You, you do play fetch in the backyard? Oh, no, I can't play fetch because the dog growls at me when it tries to take the ball. Oh, okay, do you, uh, you uh, 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 do anything with the dog? Oh, no, no, no. It's just, it's a little, it's a little wild. You know, the dog has got so much energy that he starts to put teeth on me and stuff, so I can't really play with it anymore. So I just, you know, I, I, I leave it in the back room of the house or I leave it in the crate and, you know, that's just, I just, all I do with the dog. I don't know why, but that's just, unfortunately, hard for me to hear. It's really hard for me to hear. And, and, it, and it's hard for me to hear in a way that I shouldn't be affected because it's not like I'm actually going to, in reality, do anything because I can't really do anything about it. But uh, it's, it, it, it just, it just, it leads me to just really, because I just understand what these dogs are. They're not just this dumb little robot that we just shove in the corner and it's just okay to turn it off now and I'll turn it on when I want to play. It, that's not what they are. And when, more and more I keep interacting with them, the more and more I keep realizing how emotional that they are straight up and how connected to us they are. The more I see that is just like the most ultimate level of abuse at the end of the day in reality. That's why for me, it, straight up, the, the um, abuse to me, I use these words in some videos just to, just to say stuff, just to kind of, it, it, it's how it, it, it's how YouTube works, straight up, folks. If I say that a, a, using an e collar is abusing the dogs, it, it gets it, people to react, it gets people to comment, it gets it gets more of it out there. But in reality, I know what the real, true, core understanding of what abuse is. It's straight up neglect. It's straight up neglect. It, 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 if you even were using your prong and collar even in an aggressive way, it, at least I know that you're trying to do something with it, <laughs> straight up. You try to do something with it at least, as opposed to just putting it in a crate, never allowing it to be able to interact. That's straight up abuse because they're not doing anything at all, anything at all. You're just feeding it, taking it out for a five second potty break, bringing it back in and just locking it back up again. That's, that's just the ultimate form of, of abuse because it's straight up neglect. Animals need like, all, not all animals, but dogs need that like, they need us. They need us to survive. They need some social aspects of their lives to be able to survive. They don't need a million dogs and a million people, but they need us. They need us. They can't even just really do all that great, just put two dogs together in a back room and just let them play all day. They need us humans. They need us. They need us to survive. So when we just do nothing at all with them, that's just straight neglect. That's just straight abuse at the end of the day. And, and unfortunately, there's nothing that any of us can do about that. That's just, that's, that's acceptable until something extra happens, until something further goes down. 
until it gets to the point that we have to like, the dog put teeth on somebody. That's the only time that the dog is now in a bad case that now we can look at the owner and say, hey, what's going on here? But before then, whatever. This is just an interesting world that I straight up today believe that some folks just shouldn't have dogs because some folks just are so far away from nature and understanding who we are and what dogs are and what animals are and, and what we're all about and, and the animal of us and the instincts of us and what a tree is and how the world functions and moves. And some folks just shouldn't be able to have dogs because I don't believe that they understand how to even care for anything because it, it, it just, to me, shows. It shows based on what it is or how some of these relationships are going with how some folks are with their dogs. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Uh, Oreo. Man, something that I just really, really realized about these dogs. They can hear, man. They can hear. You don't need to get loud with them. And I think that a lot of times when we get loud with them, they, they get a little hostile with us because they're like, why are you yelling at me, basically? But they can hear from a good distance. Uh, yeah, come here. They can hear from a real good distance. And, and something else that I just really see is just touching them too much. I can also see how the dog is going to look at that. In uh, Ophi, don't be a follower. I told you, you stuck with me right now. I'm doing this everything on purpose. If I had all of them with me, it'd be easy. Uh, come here. It'd be easy. You would stay. But I purposely got them free to let you know you just stuck with me. You stuck with me right now. It is what it is. I appreciate you coming back like every single time I'm calling you, though. <laughs> That's what I'm basically looking for. She better come back every time. But I got to keep her calm. But touching them too much, I believe, is disrespect to the dog. Talking too loud to them is disrespect to them. Just talking and, and touching. Did I say talking? Talking, touching, talking too loud. It's just disrespect to not all dogs, but most dogs. Because we're just like, calm down, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. I don't know how many times today I saw someone just grab, like, I don't know why this is normalized today. People just grab the muzzle of the dog to try to get it to stop barking. That is so disrespectful to that animal. You know, wonder why it doesn't want to stop. It's like, forget you, I'm going to do what I'm doing. And then we wonder why the dog doesn't want to listen to us. Because we're doing, at the end of the day, like really just disrespectful stuff to it. That's why it's weird to me that <laughs> some folks are so against like certain training methods. I'm straight up going to say something right now. I just noticed. The pip, just stuff that I've noticed. Because I watched the videos and, and especially the last, the dog daddy one I went to, there was a protesters out there and I got everyone's names and I went on all their Instagram and YouTube channels and watched how they work with dogs. And they were all... <laughs> There's something about the whole purely positive side of things that they are the most aggressive towards the dogs than any balanced trainer that I personally have seen in my, in, in, in my face to face. I see so-called force free trainers are more, more ruthless to the dogs to get them to move than anyone that just slaps the e-collar on and just literally just blasts the dogs until it just pees and poops itself. Because you're, you're, you're playing a psychological game with that dog that is just, you're just bullying it around. Not everyone. But a lot, a lot, a lot that I see. It's not so calm and positive and peaceful. There's a lot of just negativeness with it. A lot of it. And people are portraying to be, I'm a force-free trainer, but in reality, straight up, I, I would rather you just slap that e-collar on or that prong collar on, just, just yank the heck out of that dog once and be done compared to what you're constantly just doing to that dog over and over and over again. Stuff that I don't think a lot of people are paying attention to. Someone states that they're a, a force-free trainer, but yet the methods and the techniques that they're doing are far from force-free. They're furthering into force. And this is the thing with me that straight up, I don't know how to get away from it. I'm trying, but I got to use a leash. <laughs> and I'm forcing the dog to stay with me. But I don't need to apply extra to that force. I'm just going to stay at this. The level that I believe that a dog understands. Contain the dog. Keep the dog with you. I keep the dog with me. And there's times of the day that the dog is over there, you're away from me. So there's times of the day that the dog is in the front yard, where I consider my front yard. In the front yard, I'm inside. Times of the day that I'm on the computer doing stuff and the dog's in the living room. 
There's times that I just separate myself, and then there's times that you're with me. You're, 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 you're with me, and you're going to stay with me. And that's the, the force that I say I'm going to put on the dog, that you're with me. But I don't need to go above that because a lot of what a lot of said force-free trainers are doing in this stance right here, you're doing a lot that is negative to the dog. It may not be negative to a human, but it's negative to the dog. You're, 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 you're being ruthless to the dog in dog-to-dog -dog language. But you, you think that you're for, force-free and you're wondering why you're not actually getting anywhere. Because the main thing is, man, I just saw a, a very interesting video of a guy using a, showing about the ball and talking about how I talk about it in reality. I'm not worrying about training my dogs. I'm worrying about opening up that line of communication. What I'm doing right now is not training. I'm getting her to understand what I'm asking of her so that we can talk to each other. I'm saying to her, this is what I want right now. I'm not going to use any sort of manipulation or punishment or reward or nothing. to. I just want to talk to her. I want her to be able to talk to me. I want to be able to open up a dialogue right here. That's all that I focus on majority of my time. And it's a very interesting video to really just let me really dial that in. I'm not trying to train the dog. I'm trying to talk to the dog. I'm trying to be able to open up a line of communication that both of us can understand. And she don't know English. And she don't know anything. She don't even know human body language all that well. I need to teach her what my body means so that she understands exactly what's going on. And I need to study and understand her, what her body means, so that we can be able to communicate. Once you can communicate to the dog, life is easy. Like every single time here that she takes off, I can just say, hey, hey, come here. She comes to me. Somehow, through all that I've been doing, it's not training, it's communication. She understands, oh, that's what that means. I just come back to you. Day one, heck no, I'd say that. And she, of course, she's gone. She's, she's going to keep on running. But it's because not because she's not trained to understand. I had, She didn't understand what I was trying to say to her to do. So when I'm, when I'm faced this way and the dog's going this way and I'm like, come here and I'm walking towards her, she's going to turn around and keep on running. Whereas if I turn around and I move this way, she's going to come back and try to follow me. That's, that's communication. We got communication going on now. Right now I'm saying to her, I want you to stay with me. Communication with this leash. This is what I want from you. I want you to stay with me. I'm getting her to understand my language so that she can, she can, she can, she can respond to what it is that I say. And that for some reason is like confusing a lot of people. Johnny, leave him alone. Let him come back down. Johnny. This is all that he's good at is is uh, containing the animals. He can't move them. He can get them to stay stuck in a spot. So if I allow him to just keep doing what he's doing right now, those cows won't come down here. But if I, oh, let's see, Oreo, go home, go home. Hey buddy, go home. Oreo, get up, go home. He don't want to leave because he, the cows are there. Go home. Because the cows won't come if he's here. So I'm gonna see if the cows challenge Johnny right now. Y'all can see something very <laughs> funny. You get uh, you get to this part of the video, you can see the good stuff. Uh, go home. It's hard for him to leave when these cows are so close to me because he's like, his soul, uh-uh, all the way home. I want you to go all the way home. Go home. Oreo, go home. His sole purpose in life is to protect me. And he knows that Johnny can't do it and she can't do it. So he's got to like keep my back because these cows are putting pressure right now. But as long as Oreo the border collie is here, the cows... Johnny is like, he, he turns into a, a he, he got this fake confidence, but I don't think he realizes that like, you know, he's like the little guy and then there's a big guy behind him where the, the cows can see the big guy behind him, but Johnny's like, see, they're scared of me. And it's like, no, it's the big guy that's behind you. But once, uh, <laughs> once he leaves, it's free game for the cows. They're gonna, they'll start to challenge him. Oh, they're gonna leave now. <laughs> Cause Oreo just leave. <laughs> He's right here. He was staring at him like, don't come closer. Then he went to the house. But uh, uh, the cows, will they won't challenge him, but they'll challenge Johnny. And it's just a, it's a very interesting thing to see how, how, how the animals respond and work with each other. And again, this is something that the reasons on why I see, what's up, man? See how the dogs are and what the difference is of what they're all about is because of this work that I do now. Because I can see how, how like even right there, when I'm telling my dog, the average person would be like, that dog's being disobedient. It's not listening to you right away for you telling it to go home. As opposed to, what have I been teaching and showing and training that dog since day one that I want from him? This is the hardest part with a lot of y'all, where your dog is reactive. You've been teaching your dog, this is a prime example right there. My dog isn't said reactive on a way that he's displaying stuff, but he's reactive in a way of saying, I, you better get away. That's the language that he states, the language that a lot of y'all dogs state when you're out in public doing what you're doing. You, your dog is telling everyone to get away, I'm nervous. But he's not in the sense of, I'm nervous, he's in the sense of, this is my job. 
you're not supposed to be around my man, me. And and I it's say easier for me to convince him because if I just tell him to come here and lay down, he he I can get him to get out of it. But y'all can't get your dog to get out of it because you don't you haven't explained that language of like when to turn it on, when to turn it off. So you've been telling your dog for the last three years, keep the threat out. And then you're going to try to come in one day, three years later, and say, you know what, I don't want you to do that no more. It's not just going to be a simple like, oh, just stop doing it. Because a dog's going to be like, but I, I, we've been doing that my whole life. What's going on now? Why, why, why are you not making me do this now? So then a the dog, it, it, it's very, very confused. It's like, but now you're just free and open and anything can hurt you. And a dog, it gets a sense of like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, what to, I, don't, I can't not be there with you. I have to do this. You've been telling me to do this. And that's, that's challenging for a lot of y'all and why you can't find that, that fix with why my dog keeps wanting to bark at other dogs and keeps on wanting to bark at other people because you've been telling it to do that. And then trying to tell it not to do that, it's like, that's all the dog knows. So then you have to really just change up everything that you've been doing with that dog to show that dog, I don't want this anymore. And that comes down to, in reality, straight up, this is the individual part, being creative. You, you got to get creative with your own animal to find the results that are going to work for you. If you try to emulate me, you're, it's going to be short-lived because you can't be me. I'm me. And, and I always want to just be me. I don't want to be no one else. That's that thing that I keep on hearing people say at the end of interviews today. If you could change, change shoes with anyone, who would you be? No one. I want to be me. I don't want to be no one else. I like me. I'm all about me. And, and not in a way of I'm the best, I'm the greatest, but just I know what I've done and became and where I'm at and what's going on with me. I like this. I enjoy it. It's not perfect, but I enjoy it. And uh, uh, the dogs, the dogs are going to respond to me because I can be me all the time. When you try to be somebody else, you're, 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 you're going to be struggling. You're struggling. That's why you got to dig deep a little bit and be a little, little more creative. That's the part that I believe anyone that listens to me, you totally understand what I'm saying. You'll find your way. But some folks, they y'all don't want to do nothing with that dog.